Now in this question then, we've got to find dy dx for y equaling natural log of x squared plus 1 all divided by x. So how are we going to do this? Well what we've got here is two functions of x being divided by one another and I can't simplify this any further. So this is a typical question then on using the quotient rule. And If you're not familiar with the quotient rule, here it is. If you've got y equals u divided by v, where u and v are functions of x, and our u would be natural log of x squared plus 1, and v would be the x, then it can be shown that dy by dx equals the bottom of the fraction times the differential of the top, minus the top of the fraction times the differential of the bottom, all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. OK, so let's put this into practice and uh, we'll get on with this question. So we therefore have dy by dx equals. So whenever I'm doing things like the quotient rule, I always put the division line first, OK? And if we start by taking the bottom of the fraction, which is x, we need to multiply it by the differential of the top of the fraction. Now, to differentiate the natural log of x would be 1 over x. But because this is a composite function, x squared plus 1, we have to use the chain rule. And if you're not familiar with this, I've got some examples on my website. Just look under the chain rule uh, in the tutorial section, and you should find I've done, as I say, some examples on differentiating natural log functions. Now, if we're using the chain rule, I would nominate x squared plus 1 to be t. So I have the differential of the natural log of t, which would be 1 over t. So I would write 1 over what I've nominated t to be. That's x squared plus 1. OK, put that in brackets. Now, you have to multiply this by dt by dx. In other words, I need to differentiate x squared plus 1 with respect to x. And that gives 2x, so put that there. OK, so this part here is the differential of the natural log of x squared plus 1 by the chain rule. Now that I've worked out this part, we've got minus, and we now need to do the top of the fraction, which is the natural log of x squared plus 1. So just write that in, natural log of x squared plus 1. Put this in brackets. And now we need to multiply it by the differential of the bottom part of the fraction, the denominator. So if you differentiate x with respect to x, you get 1. And according to the formula now, we have to divide this then by the, the square of the denominator. So in the denominator we've got x, so we just need to square that, and we got x squared. So that's essentially dy dx, and I'm sure you get a few marks for doing that. Now we need to just tidy this up. So we look at the first term here, and if we tidy that up, what we've got is x times 1 times 2x, which is 2x squared. And then this is all over x squared plus 1. All right. As for the next term, we've got 1 times the natural log of x squared plus 1. So we've got minus the natural log of x squared plus 1. And all of this is over x squared. So we'll put that all over x squared. Now, if I was tidying this up now, this fraction here, the x squared plus 1, is in the way. We need to get rid of this. So the way that we can get rid of this is by timesing top and bottom of this fraction by x squared plus 1. So I'll just write it in here. We're going to times the top of the fraction by x squared plus 1. And we're going to times the bottom of the fraction by x squared plus 1. Doing this, x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1, these two cancel one another out, which is just like timesing by 1. So it's not going to alter the value of this fraction. It's just going to alter the appearance of it. So if we multiply the first term on the top with x squared plus 1, then what we're going to get is just 2x squared. 
because those x squared plus 1's would get cancelled out. Now we go on to this term and multiply it by x squared plus 1 and we get minus x squared plus 1 being multiplied by the natural log of x squared plus 1. And don't fall for the mistake of saying that it's this x squared plus 1 that you multiply by x squared plus 1, giving you x squared plus 1 all squared. The x squared plus 1 goes out the front, okay? This is a function. We've done the top, now we just need to do the bottom. So we've got x squared times this x squared plus 1, and just leave it as x squared times x squared plus 1. No need to multiply it out. Okay, well that's one way that you could leave the answer, and that's the way that I would generally prefer. But in my numerical solutions, I've taken this further. What I've done is that because we've got two terms on the top divided by one term, I have changed this to 2x squared all divided by the denominator here, x squared over x squared plus 1. Okay. Then minus, then we've got this second term on the top, x squared plus 1, being multiplied by the natural log of x squared plus 1. And this is divided by x squared bracket x squared plus 1. And in this version, what you can do is you can cancel out this x squared with this x squared. You can cancel out this x squared plus 1 with this x squared plus 1 not this one here, okay, because that's in a function. And so, what you have is an alternative version. You have 2 times the 1, which is 2, all divided by just the x squared plus 1 there. And then for this one, you have natural log of x squared plus 1, okay, all over x squared. You can either write it like that, or you could write 1 over x squared at the front. Either way, that is an alternative version for the solution. Okay, well that brings us to the end of the first part then in this question.